Okay, uh, hi all. Uh, yeah, well, uh, first a little bit uh, about me. As, as our assistant said, I came from Spain. Uh, I moved here not long ago. That was a big travel. But I'm going to talk about a bigger travel. Uh, I used to be a Django developer full time, and then I suddenly started putting more and more JavaScript in my templates. And now I mostly write JavaScript instead of Python. I'm not happy about that, but uh, I'm going to try to guide you, uh, to give my opinion if you find yourselves in the same situation to do JavaScript le the less painful possible, right? But I mean, you have all the right to ask, please, uh, JavaScript, uh, why? This is PyCon, please don't talk about JavaScript. Yeah, you can have your shiny Django application. Maybe you only have this little jQuery plugin to do some kind of animation, something. Yeah, you might be lucky, but business is business. And there are a lot of platforms. Apple now uh, releases three iPads every six months. <laughs> Android devices grow in trees. Uh, now, like Microsoft Surface, I mean, all those devices run JavaScript. Um, I think that you are missing a huge opportunity if you have an already built Django system and you don't try to, to target those, right? So if you have a, an API in your system and you can increase your visibility in all those devices, you are going to, I think that improve your business. Mm -hmm. So about the API, I'm not going to say that much uh, because Django, I mean, everybody here, I guess that knows Django, you can, talk to the guys in Wave Accounting, they know way more Django than me. Tasty Pie, we have Daniel Lindsay here, so I'm not going to say anything about Tasty Pie, you can ask him. But from the web page, uh, you have a list of the main features of Tasty Pie. I think that it's really important, the one about the reasonable defaults. Because when you are starting with something new, it's good that you can install it, drop it in your Django application, and it works, right? It's something that was mentioned yesterday in the in the hack uh, in the first conference that we have about the hack schools. I mean, if people can start working with it, it's amazing. So I think that Tasty Pie is a good option because of that, because the configuration is painless. So this could be the most basic Django application ever made. We just have two models, a person, and tasks that can be assigned to that person, right? So if you have these really simple models, you will have these TastyPy resources. TastyPy has millions of possible options to configure it. Maybe the most simple way to use these resources, could, this could be a, an example, right? So we like this code. We are Python programmers, we like this. So to introduce the JavaScript part, first I would like to talk to you about, the, uh, about my personal experience when I had to deal with this uh, like 10 months ago. I started, uh, I had this, uh, a friend of mine had this idea and he asked me to collaborate with him and he was trying to do a gift oriented application so friends can send gifts to friends and stuff in mobile devices. But it had to be, uh, I mean, we, we need uh, to have the client application in the smartphones. And also, uh, the idea was that you were going to receive a code and then go to a specific venue, to a theater, a restaurant, something, and then exchange with that code the, in the venue. The, the person there could have a tablet and scan your, your code. And all, that would be like the basic uh, in interaction in the application, right? So the requirements, this wasn't a job. This was something that we did in our uh, free time. So the idea was to share as much code as possible between the two applications, both tablet and smartphone. It had to be multi-platform. Even when we started uh, focusing on iPhone and iPad, um, it has to be multi-platform. That was a really, really important requirement for us. But the most important was that we need to have fun because that wasn't our jobs. Uh, I mean, that, 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 that was something that we were wanting to do with fun. We, we had experience in the web platform. So HTML, JavaScript, um, PhoneGap, 
sounded like the perfect choice for us, right? Our phone app now is called about Apache Cordoba, but I hate that name, so <laughs> excuse me, I use phone app. Okay, so yeah, this is cool. A lot of problems. We can start now the, the discussions about uh, native against web apps. Well, okay, we, we took this decision, right? And we needed to have a framework to, to sort all this JavaScript code. Because we are building backends with Django, with Ruby on Rails, with whatever. And we are using frameworks to do that. But we, we are putting in the client just JavaScript. And we're complaining that JavaScript is horrible. Uh, and it is. I mean, imagine to, buy, to build something like Django, but by yourself with Python scripts and without the framework. I mean, it's, it's really, really hard. So when you want to do complex applications, you need to rely on a framework. So we chose Ember.js. It has a lot of features. It, it would deserve a presentation to, to itself. But we are in a PyCon, so I'm going to go fast. Uh, I mean, the more important are these more productive out of the box, uh, according to, the, to their website. And I mean, you have everything ready for you. It has a lot of conventions, so there is a way to do things. There is a, uh, there is a way to name things. And you follow those conventions, you are going to de um, develop really, really fast, right? So on top of that, you have uh, data bindings in JavaScript objects. So dependencies are automatically uh, handled by the framework. You have computer properties that observe attribute and they auto update, so you don't have to do anything like that. They have the magic uh, automatically refresh uh, templates, uh, where you have to you, you can forget about jQuery selecting with a CSS selector and replaces the text and element. Don't do that ever again. The magic templates do that for you. Forget about that. Uh, also, the router. The router is a really important component. Um, all, the, all the Ember applications um, are meant to be around around it. Uh, so it's the main structure of your app. And it really feels like editing the URLs.py in Django. So if you are familiar with that, you are done. It's linking views and controllers to a URL. It's, you know that, if you know Django. So handlebars is a, the templating language is built on top of Mustache, but it's ready to work with the other components of, of Ember. For me, it feels really like the Django templates too. So I mean, it was really easy to 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 move to it. And what we are going to talk about today is that last part is the persistence layer that Ember has. Um, how you ca how can you define classes in, and do inheritance and also use mixings. You have all of that with Ember, right, in JavaScript. Uh, and that's pretty cool. But I have to mention the coolest thing about Ember is the community. It really, people is really helpful. People really wants you to use the tool. So they are always like um, ready to help in the IRC channels, in Stack Overflow. In, I mean, they are just amazing. So the component I want to talk about today is Ember Data. It's one little part of the whole Ember framework, but it could be the equivalent to the Django ORM in the, in the, in the Ember framework. Um, basically, uh, it provides two things. Uh, I mean, it, you can first, I mean, OK, look, well, the, the most important part is the playing with models. right? So in Django, we have the concept of models, and we build all, all the application on top of those are the basic units of information. So we have models in the JavaScript uh, part, and we are going to be able to read them, create them, update them, delete them, but without writing a single jQuery.ajax expression, right? So we are going to see that they are really, really verbose. Uh, it sounds like the perfect option to connect with Testify, right? Because I mean, it's ready for read JSON and write with JSON. So it seems really easy to connect it. Uh, I was going to show how to build models with vanilla JavaScript, even with Backbone.js, but I don't want to hurt your eyes. So I'm not going to show that code. 
Mm, JavaScript doesn't have even a way to define classes by itself, so there are several approaches. You have to take one. Maybe that's not the one that works with another tool that you're using inside JavaScript, so that's kind of a problem. Backbone does a good job with um, the fetch and save methods to communicate with the server, but if you have to do validation or validate types or something like that, you have to write really, really uh, dirty code. So these are the Ember models, right? If you remember the slide with the Django models, so it's a direct translation. So at first I'm defining the, a namespace, and then I have my model person and my model task. Notice first the name that has that DS attribute string. I have a string type, number, date, Boolean. It feels like more like Django. More, you have that. You don't have that in, in Backbone unless you put something on top. You don't have that in JavaScript, of course. So that's pretty cool. But the coolest part by far is that it manages associations. So you can define as many could be like your models dot many to many field belongs to is the foreign key field, and that's all you need to tell Ember how your models are related in the backend. He's going to do everything with that information. You don't need to provide anything else. So the other part of uh, Ember data beside the models is the adapter, the REST adapter. It's something that works both ways, so it's going to take your JavaScript object, objects, serialize them, and send them to the backend. In the same way, when it, it um, receives uh, JSON from the backend, it's going to convert it to objects in the JavaScript part. You have methods like find, create record, update record. It's obvious what they do. So, OK, let's put everything together. Everything is REST. Our problem is solved. Everything has beautiful defaults. No, no. Here is where your problems start. So, TastyPy has, by default, uh, the JSON. Uh, first, we have this uh, way of identifying things with the resource URI, this API v1 person, one kind of thing. Ember doesn't expect that. Ember expects a regular ID. Also, TastyPy uh, in, uh, sends you back a lot of useful information uh, in the meta object, so you can do cool things like pagination and stuff. And also, all your objects come in that objects uh, key as a list. Ember doesn't expect that. Ember expects, instead of objects, the name of the resource, in this case, in this case ta tasks, and then the objects inside with ID, without resources I I URIs. Also, if you want to list objects, by default, TastyPy doesn't pluralize the name. Ember expects the name to be pluralized. TastyPy by default doesn't return when you create or update an object. Ember always expects data on return. If you try to fix this by yourself, this is not just no. This is no. I mean, it's really hard to, to put all those things working together. So you have to make yourself a question. What should I change? Should I change the TastyPy settings? It's easy. I'm a Python programmer. I can do that. The problem is that what if I already have another client consuming that API? I should need to change that, those two. Doesn't sound like a good solution. Also, it's already working. Why would I modify that? And it's awesome. If I change something of the internals of TastyPy, what if I broke it? I, mean, I don't want to do that. I could change and patch Ember data. So I go into the JavaScript. The problem is that Ember itself if you go into the deep, deep way of uh, how Ember works, it's a really complex piece of JavaScript. So if you want to change that, you're going to have a hard time. And also, if you start breaking the conventions that Ember gives you, you are going to start having more and more complex code. So you miss all the point of using Ember. But you have to decide one, right? Well, no. The answer is that you shouldn't change anything. And that's why Ember data is really well constructed, and you can overwrite the methods of the adapter to fit your needs. 
So, uh, for that project, I created this uh, Ember Data TastyPy adapter. It's available there in GitHub. And you have there a list of the methods that overrides. Uh, how the REST adapter works is the adapter has inside another component called the serializer that could be the one that converts and interprets the JSON. So those are the names of the methods that I had to overwrite. There are w much, much more. But those are the ones that I had to overwrite. So if, with the names, you get an idea, right? I mean, did create record would be the success function of the AJAX call that creates a record. Uh, did find record, the same, right? Uh, the build URL. Uh, so uh, you know what those methods are doing, right? They are really verbals. The serializer or the keys that fix all the problems with the resource URIs style uh, of TastyPy and the expectance of uh, IDs in Ember Data, right? So those are the methods that you have to change. And that's all. I mean, I made that. That piece of JavaScript is not beautiful JavaScript, but that's working, right? So if you want to use that, how do you do that? What do you still have to change in your system? Almost nothing. The Python side, they always return data in your meta resources. That's something that you have to add. I mean, there is no way to, to do that. If you are only going to read data from your server, you, need, you don't need that. That's only if you want to create or update uh, resources. Also, you are going to need to deal with the authorization in TastyPy, but that's something that you have to do if you are using a TastyPy uh, interface anyway. The client. Uh, if you go to the Ember.js uh, documentation, this is how you uh, create a store. By default, you would uh, uh, include an adapter, a DS REST adapter. Instead of that, you only have to use this one, and it works. You can also add uh, some parameters. If you want to do cross-domain, you can use the server domain parameter. If you have a different namespace, you can give it there, and it just works. So we are really... Bad on time, but I'm going to go fast in some examples or how your JavaScript would really look, look better if you use this. So these were the models, remember? So this is how you find all the people. App person .find. No jQuery, no any success functions, anything. That's ready to be used. How you find a specific person, find a specific person? Passing the ID. How do you create a person like that? And you pass the name, and that's all. The App Store commit is like your safe method in the Django URM. It's exactly the same. So feels like home. How you create relationships? Like that. Create a task. I set the person of that task to the one that I created before. Commit. The system is intelligent enough to do all that in one request. It pulled both instructions in one single request, so you save that time. You can also do filters. Uh, by name. Also, this is compatible if you do custom filters in TastyPy. You can uh, include them in, th in those JSONs. We are using that in our project. It's really cool. Update a record. Delete a record. Same. Really easy. There are more advanced features. You can use transactions. You can uh, use uh, scenes to do, if you have a huge list of elements, to have several queries. It's not available yet in my adapter, but it's in Ember Data. It's handlebars ready, so if you put some variable in, the, in your templates, it's going to auto-update when the request comes from the server, so you don't have to do that. Everything works to get, uh, together in Ember. You can do your custom server queries. You can, I don't know, you can do... Record states, you can inspect if an element is dirty, if it's saving, if it's in flight. You can have all that information and can be as advanced as you want. Uh, I'm really getting out of time because I only have one minute to go. So things to do. There are both parts here. First, the Ember community. I mean, they are going to release Ember JS 1.0 soon. But in the meantime, some things change. Ember data is not part of the core of Ember, it could be when Ember 1 is released, so a lot of things may change there. That's a kind of uh, annoying, but I mean, some things missing is error handling, embedded data, and the many-to-many -many relationships. 
All of that can be done now with hacks, but they are not uh, included by default now. In the adapter, well, the deletion of objects, I don't know which would be the best solution when an object has related data. If raise an error, delete all the things, I don't really know how to do that. Uh, the many-to-many -many workaround is not included in, the, in my adapter, but you can see the code. It's in Stack Overflow, I think. Uh, there are some missing functionalities from the REST adapter, like the scenes, like I said before, and also the bulk commits. Because in TastyPy, to do bulk commits, this is like creating several items in one request, you have to use patch, and you get in a there is some when you use patch, so I don't have that included right now. But the most important thing that I want to know, the, the thing that I mean, we want to know is that if you are using the adapter, if you try to use it and you have any problems, and if you have used it and you have done any hacks, please share them, because we want to improve this to be useful for everybody. And that's all. You have the information. That's my nick in Twitter, GitHub, Gmail. So if you want to contact, here we are for listen for you. Thanks.